everyone. Um, so my name is Yiming. Um, today I'm going to show you a uh, simple uh, demo code so that you understand how easy it is to uh, compose a workflow. Yeah, we will do a very simple uh, hello world type of workflow. Um, imagine that we wanted to do a two-step workflow uh, of kind of hello world. First step, we get a name from an activity. And the second step, we say a hello to this name on, its, uh, on a separate uh, activity. Um, so in the uh, terminology of uh, Cadence, in, anything you do in, in the workflow is kind of an activity. So let's first implement an activity. Uh, let's say get name. An activity is required to return at least an error so that uh, workflow knows what's going on. In this case, we will simply return, uh, because we need the name, so it will return a string and an error. So this is the, the feature of Go, which you can return multiple themes. So here we just return, say, cadence, and no error. The second step, we will just say hello, which uh, take a name and return something. Now here we will just simply return hello plus name, maybe. Okay, so now we have implemented our, our activities. Um, in real world, you implement your real activity, but basic workflow code will basically look the same. Now we have these uh, steps and we can implement our workflow. Let's just call it a demo workflow. And a workflow function, we mandatory require that your first uh, parameter of the function is a context. And this context is not a Go context, it's a cadence context. And it will also return an error so that we know what's going on. Now here, what we wanna do first is to basically uh, start this activity. And here we say execute, activity, passing in these contacts, and uh, whatever we wanted to run as the first activity. So we, got, we call this one. And this one basically will uh, do the first step of the uh, get name activity. If we look at uh, uh, the API of this function, it basically says uh, we are required to passing in some, uh, some options for the activity that we are calling. And this will also un un answer uh, one of the question previous work question on how do we configure the timeouts and all of stuff. Uh, and so, with that, uh, we are able to basically uh, start that. And in this case, some of the, if you look at the uh, uh, API documentation, you will basically say a lot of those are optional. And in, ca in, in our case, we only need to specify the timeouts uh, for the uh, activity. So in case say schedule to start is basically how long uh, this activity can be, can be queued up waiting for a worker to pull to work on. And start to close is how long we are willing to wait for this activity before server says it's timeout. Uh, just for the demo, we will set a very short time so that uh, once something goes wrong, it will easily get retried. <coughs> set them to really short. Now we have this um, activity uh, get run, uh, and, and if we look at this function, we see uh, it returns a future, and we want to get the result from that future. And we know the result is a string, so we prepare a string passing the pointer to that string and which will uh, get us the result into the, the, uh, the parameter that we're passing in. In this case, we will simply say if error is not now, we will say, okay, we failed and return that error. Now we will do the second step, which is very similar to this one, but this time we will say this is a result And the activity we are going to call is say hello. This say hello has a parameter, so we were passing in the name as a parameter to this guy. Uh, now we get this result. 
And at this point, everything is fine. And we are saying, okay, we are done. So we just for the sake of this demo, we wanted to print something to, to say that we are done. This will basically print out the result. Okay, now we have done with uh, all of those. Uh, last thing we need to do is to register all those uh, activity and workflow. And uh, usually we would just uh, register this, this uh, activity and workflow in the same file where we define this activity and workflow. So we use an init function to do that. An init function is a Go uh, feature where when this module is loaded, the uh, init function will get called. So this will register and get name activity. Register, say hello activity. Register workflow of demo workflow. Now everything is done. We wanted to test uh, our workflow code and see if it really works. Uh, first thing we do is to uh, write a unit test. Here we will just say function test demo workflow. And here, first thing we wanna do is to get a test shoot from our uh, framework. Now we wanted to get a test environment from the test shoot. Now we wanna just execute that one and see if uh, it runs well. After this run, we wanted to verify the result. Is workflow completed? And, and there is no error. Let's see if this works. Missing in function, what does he mean? Oh yeah. Because nothing goes wrong, so we return here, uh, return a nil. Okay, so we see the result. Uh, it is actually working. Now we wanted to uh, say that in normal case, a lot of times an activity will fail. Let's uh, mock a case where the, work, the activity just return error. Let's say here, and we wanna say on activity. Let's say which one is unlucky. Uh, get name and service. This guy is unlucky and just return error. This one wrong once. Now let's take a look. This test will fail because we didn't expect any error in our workflow code. Let's see, okay, we failed. So now probably we wanted to implement some retry logic in our uh, workflow code so that it will be able to handle uh, the failure case. Let's try some very simple retry. Uh, let's see. So this basically is very simple that it doesn't matter what's going on and we'll just retry if there is an error for this operation. And for this demo, we will just say maximum 10 times to retry. Now, if error, equals to, wait, I need to. Uh, up. So if there is no error, then we are done.
But if there is an error, then you will retry a maximum 10 times. And at the end, we just return this error. Okay, so this is a very basic retry logic. In real world, you probably wanted to do uh, like a, a retry uh, based on the error type. For example, you can do switch uh, error dot type, and then you can say case. So there are a couple of different types, like the panic, uh, panic error means your activity is somehow panic. And you can also return some custom error from your activity code. But for this demo, we will just ignore everything and we will just blindly retry. Now uh, we wanted to uh, wrap this actual call into the retry. Okay. And this one as well. Okay, now we have our code uh, fault tolerant. Let's see if this time it works. Let's say this first time it returns a failure and that next time we let it run, Let's see, you're good. And at the end, we wanted to verify that uh, this everything is uh, actually get called. Okay, so it passed. Uh, even though we have a failure, let's see. Uh, do we see the result? Oh. Yeah, the first time the actual activity failed and next time the actual activity are completed. So now we have this code uh, running and we believe it is very good and fault tolerant. So we wanted to run this one against a real, uh, real server. And we wanted to verify that uh, uh, the result is good. And even though like in, in case something bad happened and we are still able to uh, run the code uh, end to end. <clears throat> uh, for the sake of this demo, we will uh, save the result once. Uh, so we will add a new function, let's say persist which will save the result into a uh, normal case, you will save into a database, but in this demo, we will just save into a local file. Uh, let's say data, string, which returns an error, uh, file, uh, let's, we wanted to get the, uh, uh, the, con uh, the, uh, Workflow run ID so that we have a unique name for each run. Uh, and you will notice that this time we are using uh, the go normal context instead of cadence context as we use here, because in uh, this is activity code and activity code is just a normal code. It, it's nothing special, but workflow code is kind of special. So here we will say, get activity info, uh, let's say just wrong ID. And now we have this file name, which will basically plus this wrong ID. And we will just write this one into a file. Uh, and what it is, data? I don't remember, let me check. Uh, where is the code? Here. Okay, now we have this uh, implemented activity, let's see, persist result. And we wanted to remember that we wanted to write this thing into a file, so 
Let me try. Uh, this is the result. And the result will be, and this time the activity returns nothing. So we don't need that. Okay, at this point, uh, we implement everything and we just wanted to run this one against a real server. Let's go to this main file. And in this main file, I have pre-coded uh, up something here. Uh, basically, the idea is that when uh, we need, so basically we have two concepts. One is we need to run a worker. A worker is basically the services that are talking to the backend server to do the real work. And then we need a trigger, which basically kick off a request to the server to start a, uh, to start a workflow. Uh, so now uh, I would just copy over this code. Uh, basic idea is that this code basically create a, uh, a cadence client, which talk to uh, the cadence server. Let me copy this one. So let's go through that. Uh, this create a cadence server. The only thing we need is the address of the server, the port, and the service name that we are going to talk to. Um, and then we can start a worker. So start a worker basically is uh, create a client and then say we wanted to have a new worker and then run this worker, that's it. And then uh, we wanted to implement a code that actually trigger the request to the, the server to start, uh, uh, to start a, a workflow. Uh, okay. Service, this is actually a, so a cadence client. Okay, so with that, uh, we, we wanted to just compile this code and run. Uh, some of the thing we wanted to look at is that in this case, we set uh, the timeout to be very short because we wanted to demonstrate that uh, when, when something goes wrong, it will quickly get retried. If you have a really long, uh, long timeout, then it will wait until the timeout before it retries. So now let's get to the actual code. This will basically build our code and we can run the, uh, the worker. Okay, we are built. This will start a worker. So now we know the worker is started. Let's first just request one uh, workflow to get started. And if we look at here, we know that one, one result has been right, persist into the, the disk. Now we wanted to try something uh, interesting. We wanted to monitor how many uh, results are being persisted into this uh, uh, file. So we will say we want to re uh, start request to start a hundred workflow. And now you will see that the worker is picking up the re request and, and doing the work. So if I kill this worker, uh, if you notice it stops, but I can just restart and then it will just restart and picking up from the previous and I can uh, have more workers to uh, increase the throughput. Uh, in this case, it's almost done, so, so nothing interesting. Let's create like 200 and do that again. See if we can, uh, wait, where's, okay. Now if I, kill this worker, restart the worker, kill the worker and restart the worker, nothing should change and we should expect this to complete. Yep, so that's it. Um, basically we demonstrate how easy it is to implement a fault tolerant uh, service that uh, you can like a crash at any time and you just need to restart and it will pick up from the previous uh, state and uh, continue the work.